Hey, it's two Kates this morning. Kate and Kate. Thanks for joining me this morning, Kate. It is my pleasure to join you, Kate. And thank you all for joining me this morning because it's right before break. So I'm, yeah, let's hear it for break. All right, I like break. I like I'm pumped that you guys are here. I'm also pumped because I just said hello to some visitors who are here this morning. I don't know if there's more visitors or just this one visitor, but hey, welcome. It reminded me, it reminded me of a time way back in the day when I visited Hope. Some of you know I didn't go to Hope. But back in, I don't know, around 1998, so this is ancient history, I visited Hope one time because I had a friend who was a boy. I had a friend who was a boy who went to Hope. She had a little friend here. A little friend who was a boy who went to Hope, and I was kind of crushing on him, so I used to visit him all the time over here at Hope. And one of those times, I met Kate D. And I still remember in 1998 meeting Kate. She has no memory of this. <laughs> so it's so funny because now we're good friends. And so I always am like, oh, you know, like I'm finally friends with Kate D. Because I thought she was so cool when I met her back in 98. Well, pause. Sorry. Actually, you, as you tell the story, you thought I hated you. That's true. But that, that it's just because she's so intimidating. I thought she was so cool. <laughs> I wanted true? her to like me so much, and now she does. No. <laughs> or she pretends to, anyway. Anyway, it just reminded me of college Kate, like me, college Kate. <laughs> and college Kate, that college Kate too, but just long ago and all the things that I wish that that college Kate would know. I actually think about that a lot when I'm here at Hope, just those memories of me being in college and just because I think it's important. Sometimes that's what I, I want you guys to know the stuff I didn't know when I was in college. I want you guys to like have it easier. And I want you to, all the stuff that I was struggling with, sometimes when I'm preparing to stand up here, I think, what is it that I wish that I would have known when I was in your shoes? And so I think about 1998 Kate. And um, so, we're, we're here this morning to talk about Lent, because Lent is a season that's coming up. And I thought, what, did, what would college Kate have wanted to know that would have made it better for her in college about Lent? Which sounds weird, but stay with me here. Yeah. Well, and I think um, there's so much I'd like to talk about, like her previous story, because there's truth <laughs> and untruth in it. We did meet when we were in college. I do continually forget that. Um, but I echo Kate's thoughts a lot. And we talk about that a lot, too. Like, Cal, were we like this in college? Was it like this? Did I think this? And in regards to Lent, I think one thing that would have been helpful for me um, would have been just having a deeper understanding of what Lent even was. Um, and I grew up in a church um, that did celebrate the church year. So Lent is one of the church's seasons. Maybe you've heard us talk about these seasons before. The church year doesn't start on January 1st, but the church year actually starts with the season of Advent. If you remember that, that was the time leading up to Christmas, where we talk about waiting in expectation um, for the coming Christ. So we move from Advent into Lent. Oh, sorry. No, whoa. A lot happens in there. Advent <laughs> to Christmas to Epiphany into Lent. And we're about to enter into Lent which is the 40 days leading up to Easter. And it starts next week, Wednesday. Now, 40 days, the number 40 has a lot of significance in the Christian faith. It was the number of years the Israelites wandered around in the wilderness. It's the number of days that Jesus spent in the wilderness before he began his ministry. So it's these 40 days leading up to Good Friday and Easter are the season of Lent. And one of the reasons we like to talk about these years is because it draws us into something bigger than ourselves. We at Hope College aren't the only ones practicing Lent. Um, we Christians in North America are not the only ones practicing Lent. Lent is something that is practiced by the global church. And it's something that reminds us to order our lives and our rhythms around Christ. By the time I got to college, I had gone through this season of Lent because it was something that we did in the church that I grew up in. And I thought that Lent was about giving something up. And maybe some of you guys can resonate with this, that the way that I was taught to commemorate or participate in the season of Lent was to give something up. And so I could tell you a whole list of stuff that I gave up for Lent. Cause, like what? Uh, well, uh, one year I gave up chocolate. 
I know that's a biggie. People still do it. One year I gave up. One year I gave up dessert altogether. One year I gave up TV. Um, after I was of age to drink, one year I gave up drinking alcohol for the whole season of Lent. Yep. So that was in college. Um, college Kate again. Things I wish I had known. Um, so yeah. So lots of different things. And often I. What I wish I would have known about Lent is it wasn't about sort of taking an inventory of stuff that I didn't like about myself. Like, oh, I wish I didn't waste so much time watching TV, so I'm going to give up TV for Lent. Um, but I wish I would have thought of it more like what you described, as a 40-day period of preparing myself for Good Friday or for the cross. And one of the ways that I think is helpful to think about that is you know, if Jesus is, this, is to be the center of our lives, what has gotten in the way of that for me right now? What is edging its way into that center, and how can this 40 days of Lent be a time that I can challenge that, that I can challenge whatever's trying to get at the center of my life so that Jesus can be in that place for me? And I think that that's something that every year I need to do, because Maybe every day I need to do it because I think we live in a culture right now and maybe Christians have over all time lived in cultures that are trying to get their way into that center and that 40 days of Lent can be a way for us to really take a look at that. Not just, gosh, you know, I should probably lay off the dessert because this freshman 15 is really kicking my butt, you know, but which is why I gave up dessert my freshman year in college, College Kate, right? So, anyway, <laughs> yeah, so, so Lent, I think Lent is a time, this 40 days, when we can begin to do that, but it starts on an important day, which is Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is the next time that we are going to meet together, and I, wanted, I think it's important to talk a little bit about Ash Wednesday and what it is. Ash Wednesday is, a, is um, something that is celebrated in lots of traditions throughout Christianity. It's the beginning of the season of Lent, and it's a time when we put ashes on our foreheads as a way to remind ourselves of this. This is what gets said to you when you get an ash, ashes on your forehead. We say this, you remember that you are dust, and to dust you will return. Repent and believe in the good news. So why do we say that and why does it prepare us for Lent? Here's what I think. Remember that you are dust reminds me that God did something amazing when God made me, because God made me out of nothing. God made me out of dust. Remember that you are dust and to dust you will return. So that reminds me that I am not the center of things. After I become dust again, this place will still exist. It doesn't matter, or it doesn't count on me. I am both a miracle, and I am totally not a big deal. And this <laughs> is the mystery of being a human being who's following the way of Jesus Christ. Ash Wednesday helps me to put that in proper place. I am not at the center, but Christ is. Mm -hmm. And as we talked about it, we were trying to remember things about Lent for us in the past and Ash Wednesday um, and receiving ashes, which that's something we do here in chapel on Wednesdays. We distribute the ashes and we, the congregants, receive them. Now, I don't remember as a kid doing that. Um, one of my first memories around receiving ashes is actually in college in this very chapel. And what I wish I college Kate had understood was some of the stuff Kate was just saying, that it wasn't just about me. Because, I'll be honest, on Ash Wednesday, I always kind of went through a little anxiety check, right? So my thought was, ooh, ashes, okay, I'm a Christian, I should take ashes. Oh, but my next class is psychology, and there's that really cute boy in it, and what if he doesn't understand what ashes are, and he just thinks I have something on my forehead? And that's really awkward, you know, like when you have something in your teeth, and you discover later. And so I had this whole train of thought as I was sitting here of like, okay, I want to do this, but also I don't want to look weird, um, and it feels kind of weird, and what if you know, people don't understand that I'm supposed to have this mark on my head and they're not just looking at me like, well, that's, that's strange, you know? So I wish College Kate had understood that this was a practice that was practiced by, like I said, Christians all over. 
And I think I wish College Kate had understood um, something that has resonated me, with me deeply now um, is I, I am somebody who was baptized as an infant. And one of the lines in the baptism is, for you, little one, who doesn't know it yet, you are marked as God's own. And the pastor marks the sign of the cross in the forehead of the infant. And that happened to me. So on Ash Wednesday, when I am marked again with the cross, I am reminded that God is the God of my life from the beginning to the end and in between. This semester, we've been talking about what it means to follow Jesus on the way as we've been traveling through the Gospel of Mark. And we began this semester at that hinge point in the Gospel where Jesus reveals some more of himself and what this really means. And he says in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 8, If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake, for the sake of the gospel, will save it. I think sometimes when we hear these words, and I know college Kate, when she heard these words, thought that what this really meant was just speaking only about my eternal life, saving my life when I die. But I wonder, and I think, that God has a lot more to say to us, that it's actually not just about losing our life at the end, but it's losing our life every day, every hour, every minute, considering am I living for myself or am I living for the gospel? Which is, I think, another way of saying what's at the center of this life that I have? Is it me or is it the stuff that I have let get in there? or is Jesus at the center? What do I need to clear out of my life? One of the reasons that we wanted to talk about this before Lent even started was because you guys have a little bit of a breather right now. You get to do a little, a little break, um, take a little bit of a break, and maybe you could spend some time while you are wherever you are over break before we begin um, Lent together on Wednesday and consider what it might be for you how might you live through this 40-day period of Lent? What's maybe in, your, in the center of your life right now that you would like to clear out? What does it look like for you to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow this Christ on the way? And I want to offer a couple of suggestions that I wish College Kate had considered. So I think that sometimes some of us need to take a look at our own spiritual journey, my individual faith, right? What's getting in the way of my relationship with Jesus? And so maybe that 40 days looks like more time with God, more time in prayer. Maybe one of the things that's getting in the way for you has to do with your relationships with other people. So I sort of wish that year that I had given up TV, I maybe had considered giving up talking about people behind their back. That would have been a good thing for me to give up that year because I needed to do some thinking about my relationships, which were getting in the way in my life. And for some of us, it might look like following Jesus on the way in the context of a community and a world that has a lot of injustice that we are called to be a part of. And there are ways for us to live more justly during the season of Lent. So there are campaigns that you can be a part of, for example, that, um, that take a look at all the scripture verses in the Bible that have to do with immigrants because of the injustice that's happening for immigrants. Or drinking only water for the season of 40 days to give you a greater understanding of water and the injustice that happens around water in the world. I don't know what it looks like for you. That's for you to decide. But I hope you know what I, don't, what I didn't know when I was sitting where you guys are, and that is this, that Lent is not about being a better you. It's not about losing that freshman 15, and it's not about um, breaking habits that you wish that you would have broken for your New Year's resolution. It's not like a do-over of the New Year's resolution, right? But what it is instead is taking a look at the center of our lives so that when we put those ashes on your forehead on Wednesday, that you can think, well, it's true, I was dust once. To dust I will return. I'm gonna repent and I'm gonna follow on this way of Jesus 
um, because Jesus is the center of my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do so and be marked to be reminded that I ought to look differently. That my patterns and habits may seem strange and weird to the world, but as we follow Jesus on the way, it's not just me following, but it's us following together as a people marked as Christ's own, called to look and live differently. So we encourage you to enter into this season of Lent with us. It will start next Wednesday when we come back. We hope you have a great break. We want you to rest. And ultimately what we long for as a campus ministry staff is for us to learn how to follow Jesus on the way together. Let's pray. God, you tell us that we need to deny ourselves and to take up your cross. We need your help. We can't do it on our own. We thank you that you don't call us to do it on our own. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you will prick our imaginations now and this weekend as we prepare for the season of Lent. Help us to be creative in our ways of thinking and seeing what it means to have you be the center of our lives. What is getting in the way? Reveal that to us, God. And as we go forth today, make us attentive to you and your work in the world and in our lives and bring us back safely next Wednesday to remember that it is from dust that we came and dust we will return and you are a part of all of it. We thank you for that and we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and all of hope said, Amen. Amen.